up, Nation? I'm Gabby Verado, fifth year senior on the App State softball team, and here in my office for the first time in five years is Coach Warner. <laughs> Well, hello. I, I appreciate you having me in your office. Roles are reversed here. Yep. First time interviewing. So the first question is, how did you get to where you are today, and what made you get into coaching? Wow. That's a, that's a loaded question. Um, I always wanted to make an impact um, on, on others, whether that be um, I was going into teaching, and I was going to be a physical education major. That's what my degree's in. And, you know, I after... After I went to Barry in Miami, I transferred back to Canisius, got my education degree, and the coach I played for in Miami, she asked if I wanted to come coach. And at that point, I didn't want to, I don't really want to teach, even though coaching is teaching, I didn't want to teach in high school or, you know, middle school. And so I took a chance and I went back down there and, you know, I knew right away that's what I wanted to do. And at that point, I was actually coaching some players that I actually played with. So they were my roommates. And so uh, right away, a, a line had to be drawn. And Coach Navis right away said, you need to draw the line. And that was very easy for us because the goal was you know, success in the program. And we knew what had to be done. And so I think that um, right away, I knew that first month, I just that's what I wanted to do with my life. I wanted to coach. I wanted to make an impact. I wanted to, you know, change people's lives. And, you know, you're not always going to change everyone's lives, you know, when you're coaching. Um, but I, I just think, hey, if we can change one, even one in a year, you know, I've made a difference. And I think that I just love and I continue. Obviously, 22 years later as a head coach, um, I still love what I do. So you've been to all different kinds of places and coached so many different teams. What is probably one of your favorite things I guess as a coach, like, what is your favorite thing that you still love about softball? Oh, wow. Um, the relationships. I think that's the biggest thing for me. Of course, everyone wants to win. We want to win. You know, I came here to change the program and, and to win. And um, I remember you, um, first day of a, in a team meeting, you guys looked at me like I was crazy. And said, I said, we will win here. And you guys really just kind of looked at me like I was nuts. Um, but you guys have changed that and I think for me to see those differences and the changes within a year, two years, your four year, your five year career here, I think that's the biggest thing for me why I do what I do. Um, to make that difference, to see you guys succeed, um, to have the fun that you're having um, and just see that you love what you're doing. You know, and, and for you specifically, the, the differences that I've seen, you know, for your transformation as a player and then as a person, that's why I do what I do. Because it's huge. It's impactful that that for me I can I can say, well I did make some kind of a little difference to her. Um, and I think you and I have a, a really good relationship. Um, you know, we joke all the time. I'm not sure that was four years ago, but that's what relationships do. And when you're coaching, you build those relationships. And, you know, I think sometimes as freshmen, people don't really see that. Like, oh, well, coach always has a relationship, different relationship with, you know, the older players. That's built. And I think you and I is, is a very good example of um, how we've built our relationship, um, both on and off the field. Yeah, I think you're going to make me cry. You're not supposed to make yeah. the interviewer cry over here. <laughs> well, you know me. I'm an emotional person, emotional coach, and I, I can cry too. I know. Um, growing up, who was your female role model, and what did you learn from them? I believe I, I tried to take away a lot from a lot of different um, players that I played with. I was always the youngest um, on back a long time ago, I know it's, it's hard to believe, um, but a long time ago there, there weren't travel ball teams like there is now. And so we played on, on women's teams. So I was always the youngest and I tried to just listen and learn as much as I can and just take a lot from each and every player and the coaches. I, I always actually played for male coaches. And I think that um, the first female coach I played for was my the first college coach at Barry University was Coach Novice, and um, I tried to take things from, you know, every coach, high school, um, the women's leagues, and 
the players, in fact. And I think, you know, learning from players and trusting in players and, you know, they were, they were my role models. They took care of me. Because I was the youngest, they, they really did. They took care of me. And I thought that was always so cool. I always could look up to them. And they were so much bigger and stronger. And, you know, I was the little one. Um, my, my nickname was Pee Wee. My mom called me that when I was little. And you probably, you know, never knew that. But I was so tiny that, and I was a catcher. You know, so, you know, everyone just thought that they could, you know, run all over me. And, um, but I was pretty feisty, as you know. No, you were very feisty. <laughs> um, but I, I just think that I, I love to listen and learn, even still to this day. I think that's a huge, huge part of um, just growing as a person and as a coach is that you listen and you, you learn. So that leads me into my next question. From all the years that you spent on and off the field, what is probably your favorite advice that you've gotten from a coach or a player or just anybody? I believe you have to grow with your players. And I think that your morals and values never change, but you've got to be able to grow. And, you know, today's a whole different world than it was 22 years ago when I took over as a head coach at Valdosta State. Um, you have to, you have to have your core values. Those don't change, but players will change. Society changes, um, and you have to be able to grow. And not everyone's going to be like you. Coach Navis always told me, Shelly, you're blue collar, you're a worker, but not everyone's going to be like you, and you have to be okay with that. You stay true to who you are. And I think that that goes into saying a zebra doesn't change his stripes. You all know that. I truly believe that. And... I will continue to be who I am. Um, and I think that's why I say that to you all so much, that you've got to be you. You are Gabby Barato. You're never going to be someone else. So don't change for anybody, because you want to define who you are. I could definitely see that. I could see when you, know, you first got here. If I had to explain somebody to you, I would say she's a tough coach, but she also is very soft when you get to know her and you build that relationship with her. But, you know, you know what you expect, you know what you want your program to expect, but at the same time, you impact us in ways on and off the field more than you think you know. And I'm so grateful for you more than you ever know. And, you know, I would not be the person I am today if me and you didn't have that conversation four years ago when I first stepped into your office. <laughs> See, he stepped into my office. <laughs> yes, when I, yes, when I stepped into your office, I and, you know, we had that tough conversation. And yeah. It made me think about who I wanted to be and what kind of player I wanted to be. And I knew that if I wanted to make an impact on your program that I had to change. And I, may, I wanted to make those changes for the program. And you honestly helped me so much do that. You know, as a coach, we always want positivity. But we also, you know, if you were just okay with your performance – I wouldn't want someone like that in the program. You wanted to make those changes, and you ran with it, and I mean, huge success. So proud of you. Thanks. So as you know, March is Women's History Month. Um, what has inspired you to just keep going? Players like you. You know, it's just, it's all about the players. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you all. And I think that that's, um, that's why I do what I do. I mean, I love, again, I, I think part of it keeps me young. Um, you know, I think with, you know, you're telling me at different times, coach, you look like a hot mess. You know, let's fix this. You know, but I, I do think it, you guys keep me in line too. And we have that relationship now um, to, be able to, to be able to have those conversations. Um, but I think just for me to keep going, it's, Again, to make an impact and you know, just keep seeing you all become successful. So on a scale of one to 10, how good I, am I at interviewing? A 20. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> Woo! I know, I'm actually pretty good. Well, that's all that I have. This is Coach Warner in my office. Everybody just look at it because it'll probably never happen. I appreciate you having me, Gavin. Like I said before, I'm super proud of you and who you've become, not only on the field, but off the field as a person. And I know you'll be a huge success and you'll be a strong woman as you start your career. 
Hello, my name is Perry Tippins. I'm a freshman on the women's tennis team, and I'm here with Coach Antel. Um, today we're asking her questions on Women's History Month. So, how did you get to where you are today, and what made you get into coaching? You know, that's a really good question, actually. I, I really didn't see myself here in the beginning. I, I had graduated. I, I played four years in college, loved my experience. Of course, when I was a senior and the end was coming, you, you know, the seeds planted, you start thinking, like, is this really the end? Like, am I going to do something completely different? Yeah, so I, I got a, just a normal office job. I applied to grad school. And, and when I got my acceptance letter into grad school, it really kind of hit me, like, is this what I actually want to do? And then I decided no, and I, I moved out to California. And I got my first job in coaching there. And I was, I was really fortunate to have just some great, great role models that really modeled what I wanted to be. And they were all coaches and my coaches growing up. So I really, that was what I thought I was going to do. And here we are. And it's been, I mean, it's been a really, really interesting ride. And I tell everyone, like all of you guys, that I never thought I'd be doing this. And you guys all graduate and go on to do other things. And I'm like, it might not be the end. <laughs> but that seed was really always there for me. I always thought, like, this could be it for me. Like, this is in 30 years, if I'm sitting here talking to another Perry Tiffins, I'll, I'll be absolutely thrilled, you know? Yeah. Are there any certain, like, female role models that have impacted you? I, I've been really fortunate, and I've been surprised with how many players that I've coached who'd never have had a female coach until they, they come and play for me. Right. Um, I, growing up, I had this wonderful coach. Her name was Walker Sahag. She really just, her expertise and her knowledge of the game, it was first class. It really blew me away how she would just kind of walk into the room and command all of her athletes and just everybody had this respect and she had just such this presence. And even at, you know, 13, 14, 15, when I was working with her, it really stuck out in my mind. I was like, wow, like this is just like such a, a strong person and such right. a strong role model. And I still stay in touch with her. And then, of course, when I went to college, I had a, I had a female coach as well. Her name was Aliki Subanos. And I mean, she's such a lifeline for me now. She's absolutely everything I want to be. Yeah. And her impact on my life, it's really has been immeasurable. Honestly, I if I could be half of what she is for you guys, like I'd consider myself super successful. The way that she coached us during my collegiate career is what I want to be for you guys, and I talk to her every single week. I'm always asking her advice in different situations, and just that kind of network of female coaches that I have now has really helped me model what I want to be as a coach and where I want to be in the next five, ten years for my career. Yeah. So you said she gave you advice. Like, what type of advice did she give you for coaching? <laughs> everything. <laughs> I talk about everything with her, honestly, and just kind of especially this move up to head coach. Um, she's the associate head coach at Vanderbilt now and just kind of what the responsibility is and really how to kind of outline and lay out your goals and like kind of the vision for the team moving forward. And I thought that was really important and you should told me before I took this job to, to write down like the model of the team that I want to build. Yeah. And I look at that, if not every day, every week, yeah. to see if we, you know, we're building in that direction or we're building away from that direction. So that's something that really has helped me moving forward to kind of move away all of the other things that don't matter and make sure I'm building into that progress. And she calls me and she checks in. And we kind of talk about what I wrote down and what she writes down, because she writes something new every year for her teams. Yeah. And I think that that's something that, I mean, I would recommend for all of you guys, like who you want to be as a teammate. Yeah. But for me as a coach and, and my assistant, Miller, obviously, I, I asked her to do the same thing as well. And I think that that kind of model and that clarity of vision was something I really needed moving into this job. And she really really brought me and grounded me in that sense. And of course, there's like little everyday things. So I'd ask yeah. her what to do if I don't know. Of course, you know how to, how to work with you guys. Yeah. But she was, she was really great at um, an individualistic coaching style, mm -hmm. where she really was able to connect with each of us individually, as opposed to kind of you know, moving the group forward, of course. But yeah. I felt like she really valued this in like interpersonal connection with each of us. Mm -hmm. And she kind of had her inside jokes with each of us and knew about all of our lives. Like she would always, she still to this day, like talks to my mom sometimes. Like, <laughs> and she's just great at relationships. Yeah. And that's what coaching is. And that's what I want to be great at. Yeah. Like those relationships and building that. And at Vanderbilt, she always told me like, this isn't four years, this is the rest of your life. And it has been. And I hope yeah. that you feel that way, Perry, because this is, this is the rest of your life. Yeah. We're in this one. <laughs> <laughs> right. So if she obviously left an impact on you. What would you want to leave on like us as a team? You know, that's a, that's really a question. That's something I think about a lot. I think 
exactly kind of what we were just talking about there. Yeah. It, it's relationships, you know, and of course, like, I want to make all of you better tennis players, but mm -hmm. I want you guys to all get out of this experience what you put into it. Yeah. And something that's really important to me that I think about a lot is, you know, this, this tennis program here, it's not for me, it's not for Miller, it's not for anybody else that works here, it's for you guys. And yeah. I want you guys to own this team and own this program, and I want to promote that confidence and that ownership because, of course, we're here together for four years now, but you guys are all growing and maturing and turning into to the people that you are going to be building towards for the rest of your life. And if I can have any small impacts on that, I, I would really feel successful. And, and that's really what I'm passionate about is those relationships that I get to build with all of you guys. Yeah. You know, in our car rides, we listen to music. <laughs> Perry loves my playlist. <laughs> the same two songs she plays over. <laughs> she added them to your Spotify. That so, is true. <laughs> but just, just the little things, and then those. That's really what builds a relationship and what helps build that trust on the court and moving forward. And of course, I want to make all of you guys into the players you want to be, yeah. but also the people you want to be. Mm -hmm. So you're coming towards the end of like your first semester as a coach. What are mm -hmm. some things that you've like learned along the way already? It's been a great learning curve, honestly, and you guys have been such an incredible group to do this with. And I know Miller as well, my assistant, this is her first, first semester as well. So we've been learning a lot, but I think I've been really, really thrilled with the way that we've been working together and what we've been building towards mm -hmm. and just kind of moving back to that clarity of vision and what we're building together and recruiting the people that are going to build that vision and helping you guys know the vision and be a part and mold that, right? Like we yeah. all have to believe to move in the same direction. And I know we say one way, right? And like, yeah. I think that that one way has kind of really put us taking steps to where we want to be. Mm -hmm. And I'm really, really happy with the steps that we've taken. I know I wrote down kind of where I hope to be at the end of this semester. And honestly, it's not even done yet. And I already think that we're there, yeah. which really makes me feel like wow, I need to push harder, right? I need to push yeah. these goals and I need to go further. And, and I think that closing in the first semester, I can't believe it's almost over. It's mm -hmm. flown by, of it course. Really <laughs> <laughs> I hope you mean that, Perry. <laughs> but yeah, of course. And, and I think that we've really laid, like built the base for what we want to be moving forward. And the season is really the best part of this job, like being on the road, grinding through those matches. And, and I'm so excited to get our new group, of course, we're going to miss our seniors, but get our new group here and get a fall together yeah. so we can really lay that groundwork to move forward. I mean, it's been an incredible experience being here in Boone. And I, I'm just, I can't tell you guys how thrilled I am to get to work with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the last question, um, what advice do you have for the next generation of coaches? Gosh, I feel like I am the first generation right now. I don't know if we're going on to the next yet, but I really, for people that, that want to get into this, you know, and I have talked to a few of you guys who think you do want to get into coaching, and I think that really evaluate kind of the reasons you're getting into coaching, because yeah. of course we spend so much time together. I feel like you guys are the only people I see yeah. most of the time, but it, if you're not in it for the relationships, yeah. and if you don't view it as a career of service, mm -hmm. you're not in it for the right reasons. This, to me, truly is a career of service. Yeah. Like, we are working with you guys every single day, and I hope to be like a super influential person yeah. in your life that you remember forever, of course, but I, I think that if you have kind of that desire to build relationships and to consistently build relationships, yeah. then this is exactly what you should be doing. I mean, there's few other careers where you could impact people this much. Right. And I really think that moving forward, that if that's what you're passionate about, then this is for you. Yeah. Absolutely. And I hope, I hope a few of you guys do go into coaching. <laughs> I'd, lo I'd love to see you guys in the league. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Faith, freshman here. Joined by my wonderful coach, <laughs> Coach Angel. How are you doing today, Coach? I'm doing great. Thank you, Faith. Of course. I got one question for you. No, I'm just kidding. It's my first question. What got you into coaching? Okay, this is an interesting conversation because we are speaking um, for Women's History Month. But I played college basketball at the University of Southern Maine, and I played for a male. And I was um, going into my senior year, and I actually fractured my ankle. And so on the sidelines, I was kind of like you are, mm -hmm. you know, how you're up and cheering and everything. And he pulled me aside and he talked to me and he said, I, I think you should really go into coaching. I've been able to watch you now for several years um, at camps and um, you're just passion for the game and the way you've had to learn the game because I wasn't just this natural athlete like yourself. Um, he said, I think you'd be a really great teacher and the game needs um, more females. And so he was the most influential in me saying, okay, 
let me look at this college coaching um, career. So I know and all of the other players know that you were at other schools, especially under Pat Summit at Tennessee. What brought you here to app after you went through all those big programs? Interesting. I went to graduate school at East Tennessee State, which is just an hour and a half away. And so after my time with Pat and uh, with Debbie Ryan, I've had a lot of different experiences, worked for a lot of powerful women. I, I felt at time, it was time to spread my wings. And so I actually work, worked with an agent and on my, my sheet, it said, you know, list three dream jobs in Appalachian State was the first one. And I'll never forget, I was driving through the mountain, mountains because my dog used to be at home in Rhode Island when I was at LSU. And I got a call from my agent, and it was my birthday. And he said, your dream job's gonna open. And I said, it's August. And he said, just be patient. And it opened at a, a weird time. And my boss at uh, LSU, Nikki Caldwell, she was great. Um, she said, opportunities, when they come, you have to take them. And so here I am today, seven years later. Wow. Now, you won the WBI two years ago. But besides the WBI, what was the most memorable experience that you've had here at App, like game-wise, like team-wise, coaching-wise, like what was the number one thing that stays with you? That's a tough one, Faith. The WBI was pretty special. Mm -hmm. um, but every year, I mean, the shot pre-hit this year was a pretty special moment yeah. for our team, if I'm thinking about this year. Um, I also have to say the UT Arlington win this year I know, um, I don't know if you know the magnitude of it, but seven years, yeah. never beat them. Seniors never beat them. And then to beat them this year, I was almost crying right after the game. I remember turning to our athletic director, Doug Allen, saying, this is emotional. And you, were, you saw the way that um, Pre and Laney embraced, and we all felt it um, because there were so many moments we were so close to beating them. And doing that this year was, was pretty special. Now, I have a question for you outside of basketball. This is one that I always ask my friends because I just always want to know the answer. If you could have one superpower for your day, what would it be and why? Superpower? Superpower, like flying, super strength, teleportation, like anything. Would it be to, um, I don't know if this would be a superpower, but I think this is relevant for our conversation. I, I think it would be like to be able to have one more conversation with my mom mm -hmm. and be able to have somebody that was no longer with us um, and be able to have a conversation or lunch or... Kind of like go back in time. To yeah. Like relive a special moment. Yeah. That would be amazing. I would do the same thing, especially with my grandma. So I just completely agree with you. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time and your answers. Love you, Coach. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Lila Peters and I'm a sophomore on the cross country team and this is my assistant coach Tristan. Um, so I guess the first question I'll ask is how did you get where you are today and what got you into coaching? Um, so I actually ran um, cross country and track and field at App State um, and I ran from I think 2013 to 2017 um, and just being here, I like love the environment, um, love, you know, Coach Curcio, everything about it, Coach Weaver. Um, and I decided to start coaching here because I was having sort of like a rough time after college. I was trying to run professionally um, and I was kind of trying to find out what I wanted to do along with that just because professional running is like you can do it full time, um, but it's always nice to have like a little something else too. So um, I wanted to come back up here and train and I talked to Curcio because I was super inspired to um, start coaching as well. Cause I had, you know, had a couple of coaching clients back in Raleigh and was kind of, um, you know, it was really fun for me to help people and just see people improve. Um, and I talked to Curcio and he was like, yeah, we'll have you back. Um, <laughs> you can come coach, we need a women's assistant, so yeah. So you are a professional athlete now. Yes. And you're also a coach at the same time, so how is that, like juggling that? Um, I love it, so I've always been the kind of person that has really liked not just having one focus, but having like a couple of different things to do, um, just to kind of keep my mind busy and um, you know, just do different things during the day. 
Um, so it's actually been really good for me because I'll do my marathon training and stuff in the morning and then I'm able to come out and hang out with you guys and take you to the trails and um, do all that. So it's actually been really good for me kind of doing both. Good. So growing up, um, who was your like female role model, either like in sports or not? And like what did you learn from them? Yeah, my role model growing up was definitely my mom. Um, I grew up. Um, with a single mother. My dad passed away when I was four and so it's always been like really important to me um, to have a really good relationship with my mom and she's been like the one person that's been there for me and my siblings growing up um, and to see her just be like such a powerful woman and be able to like do everything on her own was one of the main reasons why I looked up to her and I just thought it was she was the coolest person ever. Yes. So speaking of like the women in your family, um, since it is Women's History Month, how important are like, is your family history to you? Yeah, I think my family history and just my family in general um, is super important to me. And I think, you know, family too is also, it's more than just my immediate family. It's more than just my cousins and, you know, the family that you see on the holidays. It's um, the people that you decide to have relationships with too. And I think like, my App State family, like you guys um, and Curcio and just everyone involved, Coach McLean with um, the track team has been really important for me too, just being in Boone and being away from my immediate family. Um, like having all of you guys here has been awesome. Nice. So like what impact have the females in your family, either like your immediate family or like your Appalachian family, um, had on your coaching? I think you know, looking up to my mom and even just like the people, like the girls on the team who were older than me and kind of showed me the way when I was an athlete at App State um, and just seeing how hardworking and persistent um, the women are that have, you know, been athletes here has been one of the, you know, the main things for me as a coach that has helped me out because I see it in you guys too. Um, so like when I was on the team and was looking up to these older girls, I can now look at you guys and be like, you guys have the same drive and the same, you know, perseverance that a lot of the girls did when I was on the team. So it's helped me with my coaching because it's helped me be inspired by you guys. Who inspires you like as a runner, like a professional runner? Who, um, like, is there an Olympic runner that you're like, oh my gosh, or like a really famous yeah. runner? You're like, that's my life. Um, so growing up, it's weird because I feel like a lot of the professional runners that I look at now, like you guys don't really know who they are. It's like that You're little weird generation. <laughs> um, but Shalane Flanagan, um, she's been an Olympian multiple times. Um, and she won the New York marathon a couple years back. Um, she's like 39 now. Um, so she's like kind of retired from the sport, but she's still coaching. Mm -hmm. um, but she's been someone that I look up to like as a coach too, because she's coaching the Bowerman Track Club, which is a, a pro group um, out in Oregon. But yeah, she is just kicks butt. Like she's so good at everything that she does. Like she goes out and like beats guys and stuff. And it's just nice. awesome to see, so. She has a cookbook, right? Yeah, she has a cookbook too. Um, and yeah, so she's published like two or three cookbooks now, which is awesome. And she ran at um, UNC Chapel Hill and I grew up in Chapel Hill. So mm. it was cool because she would actually come to some of the local races and stuff. Oh, okay. um, so yeah, I remember seeing her a couple of times and I was like starstruck. <laughs> mm. So it seems like she left a pretty big impact on you. So like what impact do you want to leave on? everyone here at app hopefully you'll be here for a long time i know i hope i'm here for longer too like i i guess just you know being an athlete myself um i hope to be like maybe not necessarily a role model but someone that you guys can be like okay she ran an app and like she did this and this and this and like now she's you know running professionally and um you know a co being a coach and like still keeping running in her life so like i hope that i can, I guess, influence you guys to like always keep running as whether it's just something you're doing like on the side after you graduate or whether you're like a coach or doing it professionally, like having it as a part of your life because I think having sports um, and then running specifically for us is super important and something that you can have with you for the rest of your life. 
Well, you're already an inspiration to us oh, in so many thank ways. Thank you. <laughs> Do you have any advice for like the next generation of coaches, like people my age and so on? Yeah, I would say just being like observant and really just like taking the time to get to know the athletes on a personal level because I think a lot of times it's really easy as a coach to just kind of like look at times and look at um, performances and kind of evaluating athletes based off of that. But like when you really want to see like how much potential an athlete has and like how to coach them, like everyone's different. Like you could have two girls who both run, you know, the same 5k time, but they have to be coached completely differently um, just based off of, you know, what they're doing in school or like their personal life. And so I think right. just being really in tune with that um, is important. It is really nice to have a female coach. I've never had one before, and so it's nice to have a female coach that kind of like understands that side of things that like Crucia might not yeah. understand. <laughs> yeah, I think it's. I think that's important too. Like having, um, yeah, having a female coach that can connect with you on levels where I mean, men, men and women, especially with running too. Like it's complete. It's, it's a so completely different, different sport. So um, the training, like the nutrition, everything's different. So. Right you know, emotional side, emotional side everything, <laughs> yeah. Chris, you don't ever understand that stuff, yeah. <laughs> but bless his heart. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. Got some good Thanks for all the good questions. Oh, yeah. Hi, my name is Haley Boyles, and I'm a sophomore mm -hmm. on the women's soccer team, and this is our head coach, Sarah Strickland. I'm um, just going to ask you a few questions. Okay. What made you want to start coaching, and how did you get to where you are today? Um, so my dad was a coach, my mom was an administrator, I grew up with sports being a lot like with our family so I think um, you know with my whole family having a background in athletics and my dad ended up being an athletic director I just think it was always something that um, we were grounded with. I think it just taught so many values and that um, it kept us organized, it helped us manage our time and um, I just like met so many role models and so many mentors through it that like I thought that that was a, a huge opportunity to be able to mentor others. Do you think that part of it had to do with being a soccer player yourself growing up? Yeah, so <laughs> it's kind of funny because I always said that I wouldn't coach soccer and um, every time I would try to walk away from the game like something would happen it would pull me back and I would be back on the field again and it was usually relationships with players but um, you know definitely the relationships with my teammates like made it something that um, it was real it was tangible it was something that I felt like I had an, a family extension all the time and a support system so like it was something that like I wanted others to feel and have yeah definitely <clears throat> what is your favorite thing about working with female athletes I would definitely say relationships and um, you know you were in my mentor group this summer and, and being able to um, like grow together through like such an uncertain time and and be able to talk about where we're at and, and where we are all living was very different depending on what state we were in and what city we were in and what county we were in even um, so I think you know just being able to like walk together and being like we can lean on each other um, for me that's the, the best part and to watch the growth of you guys from the time you get here as a freshman until you graduate and then watching you guys grow as alumni like for me is um, is unbelievable. I mean, there's so many that are still so connected to the program that, you know, I just remember that being 18 years old on day one of preseason running the beep test and, and now they're mothers and they're coaching themselves and they're, and they're um, like thriving in society. And I think that's just amazing. Um, I'm pretty sure you've coached like youth players too, right? <laughs> yeah. What's the difference between like, what is, you know, what separates us from them in terms of coaching? So I think, you know, I always say that like um, when I coached youth, my job was to walk with them in the moment and their parents' job was to like raise them and prepare them for college, right? So I had even a U10 team and for me it was like to help them escape. Like soccer was an escape for them for an hour and a half twice a week and then the games on the weekends and it was just an opportunity for them to get away and to have fun and to learn and to grow and, you know, the parents had kind of the more parenting role um, and the parents' job is until they're 18 to prepare them for college and then they send you guys to us right mm -hmm. and our job is not just to coach you on the field not just to walk with you every day but in life too and to help you guys with the off the field stuff and so for me it's a um, you know those relationships for an hour and a half twice a week were awesome and it was fun but you can only go so much go so far as a mentor versus every day on living life with you guys and helping you guys grow become more independent find your voice become assertive like 
figure out who you are and like watching that for me is just unbelievable. Yeah, definitely. I, I mean, I remember the days where I would only have practice like three or four days a week <laughs> and you know, it's every day now. So mm -hmm. it's definitely like a bigger part of our lives for sure. Mm -hmm. um, how would you describe our program? So definitely say our team is a family and I think it's unique and I think a lot of people say that and it's kind of cliche sometimes, but I think it's something you feel when you're around our group. Um, our group cares about each other like on a much deeper level and a much more real level than than most teams do. Um, I think we embody that in everything we do. We are like real with one another even when it's hard. Um, I think we get through a lot of tough situations leaning on one another um, and I think that the vulnerability within our program of, of people side by side is like something that's different and I think that um, because of it I think we can work through a lot of stuff and get through some adversity and um, you know that you know everyone always kind of talks about the the feel of our group that you walk in and you can just feel the chemistry of the team and um, what I love is the fact that you guys can have that chemistry but you guys can still step across the line and compete. I mean I know a lot of girls on our team like definitely wouldn't have made it mm -mm. this year without having soccer in our lives like everything else has just been too crazy. <laughs> yeah. but, well and just too up and down you know and mm -hmm. um, I think with you know whether it's like asynchronous learning how to do that versus even synchronous of logging in and trying to figure out like how to um, communicate on Zoom and, and all that like it's important I think it was a great answer I think it was a huge um, response by the university but it's also FaceTime and seeing someone and that cares about you to say like how are you doing and and provide like some kind of consistent routine you know mm -hmm. yeah definitely and kind of going back to what you said in the <laughs> first bit like I can definitely say that about our team like we're family on the field and off the field but you know during practice like some of my best friends <laughs> I live with I try to kill them in practice <laughs> like, that's not a secret sorry I'm a sorry lady <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> kind of <laughs> not really <laughs> um, what impact do you want to leave here as well as our team, what do you want us to leave here at App State? Um, I think that we made it better. I think we made it better than what we found it. I think that we were um, gracious as far as competitors. I think that we were good people, that we served our community, um, that we grew and that we learned together and that we listened to others and that we served others well and that we loved others well for me is huge. Um, but also that we were like competitive in the Sun Belt and that we put our our like name on it and that we said you know I got here we were in the Southern Conference um, you know struggled in the summer Southern Conference when I first got here got to the point that we were in the top four um, able to be like truly competitive in it and now you know transitioning into the Sun Belt and being able to you know be a contender um, but to also be like playing good soccer right that we're not just we're not just athletes out there running around like we have we have um, a way that we play and that we play good soccer and that we're out there and that we are truly competing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I know we're all excited for <laughs> next season, hopefully, when we can have like a full schedule. And I mean, this year was tricky kind of playing the same teams over and over and over again, but I thought we did a good job with it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're well prepared going into the games and everything. What advice do you have for the next generation of coaches? I would say to listen. Um, I think a lot of people think that they have the answers and they react to things based on their experience, but their experience isn't always a great one. So I think listening and hearing what the problem really is and understanding why there's a problem and, and thinking through it as opposed to just reacting, um, I think is huge. And I think also being willing to ask for help. I think a lot of people are really um, afraid to ask for help. I think it, be, it makes them look weak as opposed to um, like walking through a struggle with someone. And we always wanna do it with you guys. Like when you need something, ask for help and we'll help you. Other, other coaches same thing like be willing to say I need I need help with this I haven't been in this situation before um, and and look for someone like a mentor to be able to walk with them through those situations yeah and I can you know say as a player like it's so it's such a good feeling to know that your coach like has your back and like you can go to them about anything because I, I mean we've all probably had that one coach that just doesn't actually care about you as a person and it's so nice to finally, you know, like have that and feel like they're a good coach on the field and, you know, get, you know, does what needs to be done on the field. But at the end of the day, like they're going to have your back and you can go to them about anything. So I hope so.
March is Women's History Month. How important is your family to you? Well, my family means everything to me. It's, I mean, you know that, like, and you guys are a huge part of it. And um, I think um, my kids have grown up here and they've grown with you guys as big sisters. And when I got here, you know, Kelsey was in second grade and starry eyed and would come to the fields and was the water girl of her practice. And, you know, now she's a freshman at app and helping with the volleyball team. And, you know, my son, um, you know, was always looking for ways to help out. And now he's going to be a freshman at app next year. My family means the world to me. And you, and you guys know that you guys have been part of my home. You guys have been to my home so many times and we've had tough conversations in my home and especially last summer, like real conversations about things that were going on in the world and how it was impacting you guys and we did it in a safe place and I, you know and I always felt like it was um, a haven my husband's been a huge part of this athletic department and our program for a very long time um, has always been supportive but um, yeah I mean every every time we go to Florida my mom's waiting won't even wait for the doors to open on the bus to hand you guys candy and be <laughs> excited to see all of you guys and like basically trying to run onto the bus that I have to get her off. <laughs> you know, you this, year. <laughs> you know this year I was like, you, you need to stay on the other side of the stands. Um, but you know, it just, it means everything to me and it means, and it's why we do it the way we do it, that you guys are part of the family and, and my kids look at you guys like older sisters and not, um, you know, it's just truly as an extension of our family. Yeah, and we, you know, we love being, you know, having that feeling like we're part of your family, <laughs> seeing all the dogs, getting oh. excited to see all the dogs, and, you know, like, it is nice to have that sense of, like, home and family, because mm -hmm. obviously we're all away from our homes and our family, so we always enjoy going over there and feeling Chaos. like we're one big family of 25 or 30, you yep. know, so, um... Growing up, who was your female role model and what did you learn from them? So um, I had a lot of female role models growing up. Um, biggest probably was Jill Ellis. So um, Jill actually coached the U.S. Women National Team for a long time. Um, but Jill, like I've known her since I was eight years old, and I think what I learned from her most was just consistency and being steady and being um, like committed to details and being able to do like the little things. Because um, every time I would go out on the field with her, it was always about making sure things were prepared. Like when you guys show up, the field's already set up. You're, you're not coming out that we're busy like when you get there we're not busy we're, we're waiting to, to talk to you guys if you have something to talk about like we're not distracted um, you know and for her it was always about preparation and that if we were prepared then we could handle things and make sure that the, the moments that you needed us that we were ready for and that it wasn't that there was something else that was a distraction yeah mm -hmm. and I also you know it's just really cool to see you know like such a strong female in that environment and it just really inspires you to kind of want to be like them Hi, App Nation. My name is Jillian Olvery. I am a senior on the App State field hockey team, and this is my coach, Megan Dawson. And we're going to talk about some of the Women's History Month stuff and just female impact on Meg Dawson's life. So, I know you come from a <laughs> long family of sisters. I've had the honor of being coached by another Dawson sister. And the Dawson name is pretty well known in the field hockey world. So how would you say that the females in your life has impacted you in your athletic career and to becoming a coach? Yeah, I mean, I think I could probably answer every question when it comes to female stuff or female empowerment with my sisters. And, you know, you know my sister Sarah and got to coach, be coached by her when you were younger. And I think... Um, I think my sisters have always been that light and that path of just guiding and leading and, and examples and seeing the different situations that they've gone through and how that has impacted me and whether I do the same thing or do something different or, or anything like that. And I think I've been lucky because we've always been strong individuals, um, <laughs> full of personality, and each one of us is very, very different. Um, so I think it's, I mean, I could answer it with my sisters and just they've always been that path even my younger sisters you know just constantly learning and constantly just looking to them and, and seeking advice and it's funny you bring up my sisters because everyone's like who's your favorite who are you closest to and I'm like well it just depends on the situation depends on okay. what's going on yeah it depends on like what what we need to talk about because each sister has like a specialty in their own and so I think 
being able to learn from those five and you know it just is it, it was an everyday growth thing and then getting into college playing against them playing with them um, just has shaped me and I think they're all their differences and they've all had so many different challenges that luckily maybe I didn't have to go through those challenges but I got to experience them and either be there for them or kind of watch from alongside so I, I definitely am lucky that I've had so many strong female uh, role models and just people influencing my life and and I think that kind of got me in the coaching and I think just the the people aspect and like it's always fun to be around a team and, and you know that with your sisters yes. and your family and just like it's just always fun to have that group and so I think that kind of initially drew me definitely to coaching just the people and the family aspect of sport yeah I, I totally get that, 100%. So we're lucky because Jillian has uh, two older sisters that played hockey as well in college, and so I think our our sport just has a has a lot of female empowerment and a yeah. lot of family ties. Yeah, definitely. Family is huge in the sport of hockey. I mean, you you talk to anyone on the team, they're like, well, my sibling played hockey here or this in here, and like, well, same, like we all learn from like our sisters and like it's really nice to be impacting like siblings under us as well as just other kids under us that hockey is such a like family sport, whether you have that family aspect or not, your team becomes your family. Mm -hmm. and so yeah, I definitely agree with you. Oh yeah, family <laughs> and sisters, nothing yes, like them. Sisters. Um, so you already talked about your role models, like your sisters and stuff. Is there any like influential female athlete like in the realm of sport any sport that you really look up to that you really respect yeah, I mean, I would say the coaches, female coaches I had were always very strong, and I think that's something that you want to see is, like, as a growing female, how are these coaches strong, and how can they, you know, be brave in their roles and things like that. So I've had um, my my coaches growing up that were like that, that were very strong, and um, I think it's um, interesting to see how, like, strong and female can only go together and sometimes, and I love seeing strong and female together in sport because it's can be a male-dominated thing, and I think seeing those females be strong and kind of break barriers is a really, really, really cool thing. Yeah, I think it's cool that you um, you talk about the coaches as being like your like really big influencers and how um, they have impacted the coach that you have become. Do you think you like draw? You take certain things you learned from all of them and just combine them into the coach you are today? Definitely, and I think coaching is something that you keep changing. You know, I think you can tell too from your freshman year to, to now, I'm different and different priorities have happened and, and maybe how I go about things. And I think I try to, by the, your senior year, have a really good relationship where it's maybe not like that your freshman year just because we're growing, but I definitely have taken a lot from you know the other coaches that I've been around and and just different types of programs like what what they focus on and what are priorities and so I think coaching is luckily something you just change a lot and you grow and and if you're not growing it's probably not a good thing and you know I think what I've learned is you've got to look in the mirror a lot on the good things you look in the mirror and you're like I, I like how this was done I, I like that I did this or this was done well some things that you're like okay like maybe I do this or do that and I think being brave enough to look at yourself and say okay I, I think I would change that or I think I would adjust and being okay with it because we're human so yeah I think coaching wise I've definitely picked and pulled and things and I think even realizing in their bad moments that like it's mistakes happen to all of us but can can I grow from it and can I learn and can I make that a really big positive um, and so I think yeah definitely I think that and I think even like with assistant coaches and and people in the department like just always growing even you guys like as players like learning from you guys and taking different things and being open to feedback and criticism and, and things like that and all of that helps me some of it's not easy but that's what we have to do and that's what coaching is about so thanks for always giving me that feedback Jill <laughs> I mean it's definitely like noticeable when like the team changes every year like the the whole atmosphere of the team getting new people losing people is kind of having to like recreate and add people to your family mm -hmm. and, like it's like you said everything's changing everyone's growing and like obviously I'm not the same person I was freshman year <laughs> and, like, you're not the same coach you were freshman year but like that's what's 
so great about this sport is that you get to grow with different people that teach you different things. Yeah. You just become a whole person in general, which is why I love sports and teams and new people. Definitely. Okay, right, so March is Women's History Month. How important is your family history to you? Really important. I mean, I would start with my mom. I think like she's strong. She's caring. She knows nothing about sport, like nothing at all. Like she. Same with mine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> she was never into sports ever. Her biggest story was she went in the basketball game once in like middle school, scored a basket, and that she's all over cheering. My mom's story. My mom was like, I played basketball. That was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> And I think it's like, you know, I think like for my mom that having that experience, like that, like big time experience in college sports, like she never really cared about the actual sport. She cared about us and us growing and trying to give us everything we had. So I think it really starts with her like running all the errands for us, for getting our lunches, like, and just everything that she did. I, I don't know how she did all of the clothes and all the laundry, like every, everything I think is just so important for my mom and starting that and I mean every game I came off the field from when I was super young until I was done playing or, or playing in an adult league that it was just fun well you look beautiful out there nothing no mention about the game and it just being about like building you up and so I think it started with my mom and just having that completely different perspective so did any of your other like past generations of like anybody before you and your sisters in Division One sports? No, my dad didn't. Um, and I don't think past that, I don't think they did because I know, I think they they were all in the wars. <laughs> they didn't get to go to college. Um, <laughs> you know, like thinking of my grandparents and stuff. And so I think, I think my dad was the really athletic one. Like he in, held all the records in town and stuff, but he didn't go to college. And so for us, it was just so you guys are like the first generation of Division One athletes yeah. in your family tree. Yeah, and, and my brothers. Literally, my I am my me and my sisters are as well the first generation in our family tree as Division One athletes, which I just think is so cool. It is, and and we've started that trend like now. Like my brothers went to colleges, and we we were all really lucky, me and my sisters, because we went to the these big universities. You know mm -hmm. that like are known around the country and all this stuff that comes with it. And then my niece is uh, 2022, and so she's gonna go into school and play Division One hockey. And, and my nephew's looking at baseball, and as they all are growing up, it, it's kind of become like the trend. Like, yeah. you know, like to play sports is really cool. That's so cool. Yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad you understand the like impact yeah, that it has. Yeah, it's such like an honor, honestly, to put on your family tree, like to stamp that on there, especially being women in sport, like to be the first Division One women in sport on your family tree is such a huge honor to like start that trend and hopefully continue it. Good for us. Good for our families. <laughs> I know, it's crazy. Um, what impact do you want to leave here at App State? So I think it's, that's a funny question because I think when I first got here, it was like, I want to change it. I want to, you know, be successful and win and, and do all these things where now the impact I want to leave is like, what impact do you leave? So I want to bring in really good people like you that are going to do well off on and off the field and have you guys leave that impact for the the program, for the town of Boone to, to know and to see, you know? So I think it's, it's not about me. I want, it's more about you guys and like the people and, and building you guys up and, and helping the, the world see like how good of people you are. I mean, I think, think of all of the classes that I've had come through and I'm like, wow, they're talented, not just hockey wise, but just what you, what you do on and off the field and thinking about everyone's career path and, you know, becoming moms and things like that and just being really proud. So I think it, it's a funny question because at first it was like success and being able to see it where now it's really just important of seeing you guys succeed and having this be a good positive experience and something that you look back on that is it was something that built you up and helped challenge you and help um you know get you to where you want to go and i know we've talked about it before but like look at you and and where you're going now and how amazing that is and and your your trip and and where you're going and like you said when you were a freshman you probably wouldn't have imagined being where you are right now and going into to uh, medical school and knowing where you what you want to do with your life 
life and the career path that you want to take and knowing that nothing is going to stop you from here on out, I think is like the impact I really want to leave. Hey everybody, my name is Mogi Adamchik. I'm a senior from Raleigh, North Carolina on women's golf, and I'm here with Coach Brown today. Coach, how are you doing? Doing great. How about you, Mogi? Doing great, doing great. So we have some questions for the Women's History Month, and I just wanted to go through and ask you about yourself with them. Oh, sure. So the first question is, how did you get to where you are today, and what made you get into coaching? Uh, I got to where I am today because I went to app, um, actually, um, and... I was in the business, I was in the golf business, and I was a, a teaching pro, so I sort of was in the coaching mode anyway, and I was sort of at a crossroads in my life, and this job uh, crossed my wire, and um, I knew that I had loved my experience here, and I just thought that this might be a good next step for me, and 12 years later, here I am so just doing doing the same thing, but I, I love it, I love my job, I love what I do, and I'm, I'm grateful that I have this opportunity. Absolutely. I think growing up, who was your female role model, and what did you learn from them? I think it was definitely my mom. You know, my mom was the driving force uh, be behind uh, uh, my family, and um, I, I think what I learned from her was that, you know, her, her belief in us, uh, my myself and my siblings is you can always, you can do anything you put your mind to, and that was her mindset, so uh, that was a positive um, influence on me. Who would you consider an influential female figure in your sport, just an athlete or a coach? Time. You know, for me, I would have to go back to my childhood or, or kind of my junior years where Nancy Lopez was, uh, she was the, the, the golf um, star at the time. And, uh, you know, we were fortunate enough to hear her speak you know, at that tournament a couple years ago. I think she's, she was, she's kind of one of the driving forces of the, the glass ceiling in women's golf. And, um, uh, you know, she's she's been a role model just by her, her game, uh, how she handled herself as, as, you know, for success at such a young age, and, you know, her story where she came up from, you know, not, not so um, uh, a wealthy, she wasn't like the wealthy country club kid, she was uh, more on the poor side of town, and just uh, followed her dreams and didn't let anyone um, tell her she couldn't do anything, so... Um, for for women's golf, her, I think she was she's a driving force, and so she's kind of always been uh, someone I admired in the game. Yeah, no, she's a good. She's she was a good. She was a good positive role model. For, for um, young junior golfers at the time. For sure. I would say my athletic um, um, what impact did the females, like your mom, your sister, and your grandmother, those people in your life have on your athletic and coaching career? Um, so they, they didn't um, have much influence on my, I would say, my athletic talent. They, they didn't, my mom didn't play golf, but, and, and my grandmother was a, a huge force uh, in my life as well. But I think they, they were the, the ones that, um, taught me that if you're going to decide to do something then put your all into it and um and that you can um you know you need to develop character and you know, these sort of things and, um, that you know if you put your mind to, to something you know you can do it and don't don't ever let people tell you that you can't um I sort of was coming up right at the cusp of Title IX, where Title IX wasn't really uh, a thing yet. So I played a lot of my junior and childhood sports uh, playing on a boys team. So I, I had to take some ridicule quite a bit. So they were just more positive reinforcements of like, you know, you're doing something that you really enjoy and don't let anyone um, you know, you know, take that joy away from you. So well, that's kind of the, the, they were the, my support system, yeah, and, and I appreciate that. So, yeah. For sure. Um, um, so March is Women's History Month. System. How important is that's your family history to you? Values well, I just talked about it a couple times, but you know, I, I think you know, hopefully for everyone, family is important. Um, that's that that's your support system. 
that's where you learn your core values from. That's where your moral compass comes from. So I have a very close family, and um, you know, I feel grateful that I have that, and that's something that's a big part of my life. What impact do you want to leave your family, uh, my teammates? I think the impact I would like to leave is sort of the same impact that I had when I left. App has a special place in my heart, always will. I have, I'm, I'm very close friends with uh, my teammates that were that were here at App when I was here. Um, and just to make sure that the kids I coach, you know, they, they leave it all on the course and they have no regrets, but just that they leave with that, you know, just that App is a special place and it will, it has a special place most of the time for anyone that graduates here. And so I just, I hope that the kids, uh, you know, leave here with that same uh, special experience in their heart that they had in App, that I did. Do you we do, absolutely. <laughs> um, the last question I have for you, what advice do you have for the next generation of coaches? I think my advice to them would be to put more effort or into your into building the relationships and take take a pride in that as far as the relationships you build instead of getting caught up in the, uh, the X's and O's and the wins and losses. Like, I, I just really feel like I've, as a coach, I've developed some special relationships over the years with, with, with all the players, but, you know, just the, the time they're here and then the time when they graduate and then reach back out to you, you know, and talk about the time they had here. So, yeah, I, I would, you know, just really um, embrace the, the relationships you build. That's great. Well, thank you so much. Enjoyed it. Thank you.